Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at my process for setting up a project to mix stems either sent from a client or downloaded from a site that provides multi-tracks for practice. Before we get started, if you've not done so already, be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. Also, we're on Discord now. Be sure to click the link in the description to join the unofficial Reaper users group. The track we'll be working with today is called Who's Who in Hell. It's by a band called Last Legacy, and the tracks are provided by Cambridge Music Technology. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can download the same tracks and follow along. Let's take a look. I've already downloaded the multi-track, so I'll close the browser and go straight to the zip file. I've got the zip file on my desktop, and I like to use 7-zip, so I'll right-click the file and go to my 7-zip menu and extract here. Once the files are done decompressing, I'll open up the folder and see if there's any notes that the sender may have left for me. I can see all the tracks, and there's also a readme file at the bottom. This text file gives us a little bit of information about the track, and it tells us that the tempo is approximately 129 beats per minute. Also, we should expect 38 tracks that are WAV files at 24-bit, 44-1K. I've got my interface set to 48K by default, but Reaper resamples on the fly, so there's no need to worry about that. This is enough information for me to be able to get started, so let's open up Reaper. I'll create a new project, and I'll just give it a name. Some default settings that I like to have on my system is to create a subdirectory for each project and also to move all media into the project directory. We'll save that, and I'll need to set up my project to match the notes. Now our notes tell us that this project's approximately 128 beats per minute. Approximately suggests that it fluctuates a bit, but that's okay. I'll set my tempo to 129, and now I'll need to import my tracks. Let's open up that same folder and import the tracks into Reaper. I'll start by clicking the first track and then scroll down to the last track, hold shift and click to select all of the tracks in between, and drag them into Reaper. Reaper shows a dialog asking if I'd like to put all of those tracks sequentially on the same track or if I want them on separate tracks. Of course, we'll want separate tracks. We'll wait for the peaks to build. Now that my tracks are imported, let's get rid of the dock so we can make sure that we've got everything in the right order. The number's correct, I've got 38 tracks but this definitely will need some reorganization. I like to organize my tracks into folders so I can get around in the project a bit better. It looks like all of these tracks here are drums, so it would make the most sense for me to create a drums folder to put all of those in. There's an action that I like to use to create a folder from the selected tracks. Let's take a look at that action. I'll bring up my actions list and search for folder. The action that I use is a script from Lacassena called Create Folder to Contain Selected Tracks. This is provided by the SWS extension. If you don't have SWS extension installed, click the link above to find out how. I've got that action bound to the key press Control shift f to make it a bit easier for me to get to. So I'll close the actions list, and with these tracks selected, press Control shift f and I'm presented with a dialog that asks me to create a folder name. I'll call this Drums. And now I've got all of my drums contained in a single folder that I can collapse and I can move this to a different place to put it where I'd like to have it in the project. I usually like to have my drums first. You'll notice that my tracks have also been automatically colored based on their names. I've got another video specifically about the auto color feature. Click the link above to learn how to set up your projects to automatically color your tracks based on your preferences. We've got a couple of guitar tracks that are sitting with the vocals. It would be best if they're grouped with the other guitars. We can click these and drag them down to the other guitars, but you can also use the track manager. Let's try that option. Click on view and track manager the default key press for that is Control shift m This brings up our track manager that I've currently got docked. I'll spread it out a little bit so we can see a bit more. Let's take these two guitar tracks and move them down with the other guitars. It looks like the rest of these are vocals, and that's fine. I like to have my bass after the drums, so I'll take the bass DI track and move that up just below the drums. And let's move our guitars next to the bass. Now that I've got those tracks in a bit more logical order, I'll close my track manager and create folders for these. I'll highlight all of my guitar tracks, and I'll use Control shift f again to create a folder and call that Guitars. There's only a single bass track, so there's no need to create a folder for that. Let's take all of our vocals and group those into a vocals folder. Now, if you're new to Reaper or possibly new to how folders work in Reaper, folders provide two different functions. It gives me a better organizational structure so I can collapse the folder to get some of the tracks out of the way, but it also serves a routing purpose. In Reaper, the folder also acts as a bus by default, so all the tracks contained in the folder are also controlled by the volume of the folder itself. If I turn down the volume on this vocals folder, the summed volume of all of the tracks contained within is reduced or increased by that movement. You can also create subfolders inside of a folder. For example, we've got backing vocals here, so it would be a good idea to separate those as well to give us a bit more control. 
I'll create a folder called BGV for background vocals, and that's nested inside of the top level vocals folder. So the parent folder controls the global volume of all of the tracks contained within, but the BGV folder controls the volume of the background vocals only. Now that I've got all the tracks organized in folders, I'm in a lot better position to start mixing, but there's still a bit more that I can do. I can see up here in the guitars that some of these are labeled with DI. That means that that's direct signal from the guitar that's not passed through an amp, and I may want to mute those for the time being so I can take a listen to the song with just the amped guitars and hear roughly what it might sound like. Let's bring our mixer back up and collapse our folders. And what I'd like to do at this point is just to take these groups and turn them all down because at Unity they're probably going to be a bit loud. Let's take a quick listen and see what this sounds like as is. So as you can hear, this is a metalcore style of song. It's going to have some harmonic vocals and also some screams. It might be beneficial to go into the vocals and identify which of these are screams. That way I can name those tracks and be able to easily find them. Whereas right now all of the vocal tracks pretty much just say lead vocal or background vocal. Let's see if we can identify which of these are screams. I'll solo the vocals folder and let's take a listen. As you can see there, some of the background vocals are also screams. Let's see if we can identify those. Looks like tracks 41 and 42 are screams, so I'll make a note of that and let's see if we can find the others. Looks like we've got several, so this may take a little bit of work. I'll go ahead and create a track at random, just insert a new one and I'll call it screams. And let's see, 41 and 42, which may be different now since I've added another track. Let's take a listen. 42 and 43 are screams, so I'll take those and drag them up just below the screams and then I'll move my cursor to the right a little bit and as you can see that blue line shifted to the right to indicate that it's going to place them underneath screams as a folder track. Let's see if we can identify some others. 33 and 34. I'll do the same thing with those and grab them and tuck them inside of the screams folder. Now our screams folder is uh, redlining a bit so I'll turn that down. To become the man, like an over. 38 and 39 are screams as well, so I'll grab those and stick them inside of the screams folder also. That looks like we've probably got all of our screams there, so I'm going to unsolo the vocals track and try this again. I think that's definitely got our screams. Now let's take a listen a bit further down and see if these that are listed as background vocals are truly background vocals. Okay. Sounds like they are, so I can assume that the other vocals here are truly lead vocals. Let's create another subfolder to keep track of the lead vocals as well. I'll call that lead vocals. Move that up one level and I'll take all of these lead vocal tracks and tuck them inside of the lead vocals folder. I'll test that by muting it. There we've got the background vocals playing. Let's bring the lead vocals back in. Okay, so I think that that's got our organizational structure set up fine for the vocals for now. Let's take a look at the guitars. That's a lead track there it sounds like, so it would be beneficial to have a lead guitar folder so I can separate the rhythms from the leads and mix them in separately. Let's create another track for lead guitar. We'll just call it leads. And we'll try to identify any tracks that might be lead guitar and tuck them inside of that. Twenty-three is definitely lead, so I'll tuck that inside of the leads folder. We'll spot check a few others to see if we've got any more leads. Twenty-five and twenty-six are leads as well. We'll tuck them inside of the leads folder. Okay. 
Okay, it looks like the rest of these are probably rhythms, but I haven't seen any activity on 17 and 18 yet. Let's see. Those are clean guitars, so I think I'll make another folder for those so I can control the cleans separate from the rest of the guitars. That's 18 and 19. We'll tuck them inside of the cleans folder. And we'll make one more track for rhythm. And take the remaining guitar tracks and stick them inside of that folder. I know this seems like a lot of work, but this preparation on the front end will make your job of mixing a lot easier as you get going. So now if I go back to the beginning, with these folders set up, I can control my leads and my rhythms individually and get a better mix of the guitars overall. There's not much that we need to do with the bass, that's a single track, so we'll leave that alone, but let's take a look at the drums folder and see what's inside of here. I've got three different kicks, so using the method that we used at the beginning of the video, I'll take these three kick tracks and I'll create a folder called Kicks. That way all of my kicks are contained inside of there. I'll do the same thing with the snare. It looks like they've got triggers and samples for all of these. It would be nice to be able to control the snares as a whole, same thing with the kicks. So I'll grab all of my snare tracks and create a snares folder. We've got overheads, and that appears to be a stereo track, so there's nothing to do with that. We've got toms. I'll put those into a folder as well. I think I'd like to move my overheads past my toms folder. And then we've got a bell sample that seems like it just appears once in the song. That works. It looks like our organization is in pretty good shape. We've got the drums folder. Inside of the drums folder, I've got a kicks folder that contains all of the kicks. I've got a snares folder that contains all of the snares. I have a toms folder that contains all of the toms. My overheads and bell sample are individuals, so they're just tucked inside of the drums folder. I've got a single bass DI track. I have a guitars folder that controls all of my guitars, but inside of that, I have a cleans folder that contains the clean guitars. I have a rhythm folder that contains my rhythm tracks. And the same thing for the leads. Vocals are neatly organized with the leads in a folder, and the screams in a folder, and the background vocals in a folder. Now that I've got the project organized in a fashion that works for me, this is the point where I would typically start to gain stage. After gain staging, then I would do a rough mix of the song by just basic balance and panning. But the purpose of this video is just to show you how I would normally get started with mixing a project. If you'd like to see me mix this song perhaps on a live stream, be sure to comment below. Also, if you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee link below. I like coffee.